What if God one day decided to take away all your cameras and take away all your lenses and instead just give you the Leica Q? Would you be happy? Hello and welcome to GMAX Studios. My name is Gorky M and today we are going to be reviewing the Leica Q. Leica was founded in 1914 by Ernst Leitz and the word Leica comes from the combination of the first three letters of his last name and the first two letters of the word camera. So Leica was actually conceived because of the founder's love for photography. Leica was the first practical 35mm or full frame camera and it was the camera of choice for the gods of photography like Henri Cartier-Bresson and Robert Capa. Leica cameras have been around since before the First World War. They have seen world history taking shape and also helped shape it. The Leica cameras are renowned for excellent optics, great image quality and robustness and for combining great features effortlessly. But enough of nostalgia, let's get down to reviewing. After years of saving, praying and stealing, I was able to finally buy the Leica M8 in 2006 which was Leica's first digital camera ever. 12 years later, getting the Leica Q in my hands is like meeting an old friend. A friend who has moved up in life, got himself upgraded to a full frame sensor with an electronic viewfinder and of course, a superior internal processor. In saying this, I don't mean that there haven't been other Leica cameras in between. There have been like the Leica M9, M10, M and the MP. But the M8 is what I have and the Q is what I got thanks to Leica India. The Leica Q features a 24 megapixel CMOS sensor with a 28mm f1.7 lens. And this lens is fixed. By this I don't mean the focal length but the lens cannot be replaced with another. So no zoom. As the saying goes, your legs are the zoom with this camera. The fixed lens is not a problem for me as I am a huge fan of fixed lenses. But the 28mm, I'm not so sure of because I am most of the time using the 35mm focal length. But then this camera gives you the option of digitally cropping into your image to match a 35mm or a 50mm lens but it obviously reduces the file size. But as I shot with it and began taking pictures, I realized that a 28mm is in fact quite a good focal length. It is a much wider frame and it takes in much more of the surroundings you suddenly start thinking about the entire composition and not just the subject in focus. Also, you have to get really, really close to the subject to be able to get a good shot. Also, I think that due to the 28mm fixed lens and the overall size of the camera, as a street photographer, you are practically invisible as compared to when you are carrying a DSLR with, say, a zoom. But all technical specifications and optical qualities go for a toss if the actual usability of a camera is low. And this is where the Leica Q shines. Don't be fooled by its retro chic look. It's a sturdy device made from solid magnesium alloy. 
I wouldn't recommend dropping it, but in case you do, my bet is that it would still work. As you can see, the minimal design features only the essentials and all necessary controls like aperture, shutter speed and ISO are pretty accessible. But what I really loved is the electronic viewfinder, which really makes the scene come alive. The other features that I really like in the Leica Q is the ability to switch between autofocus and manual focus and the ability to switch between macro and normal mode with the twist offering. The Leica Q also shoots full HD at 30 and 60 frames per second and I really don't know why they chose to omit 25 and 50 frames per second and the cinematic 24 FPS. Apart from this, the Leica Q also has optical image stabilization both for stills and video which is really a boon. Image-wise, the Leica Q offers great optical quality and great colors. The files are extremely clean even at high ISOs. So these are my primary complaints with the Leica Q but they all have to do with video. First of all, I cannot understand why Leica chose to omit the so popular 25 and 50 FPS shooting option in the video shooting mode. And most importantly, why did they choose to omit the 24 FPS cinematic option of shooting videos? Had they included this in the camera, it would have appealed to a much broader range of hybrid photographers or filmmakers. Secondly, this camera does not have any option of a microphone input, which again makes it primarily useless if you want to shoot video with it. Thirdly, the HDMI output from this camera does not enable you to record video. Some people have also said that the video is not sharp enough, but I beg to differ. In fact, this clip that you are watching has been shot on Leica Q at 30 FPS and upscaled to 4K. Also, I have grown increasingly fond of the articulating screen, which the Leica Q does not have. It has a fixed back screen and this poses a problem while taking low angles or high angle shots. But I think they might have done it for the sake of durability. For the photographer, buying the Leica Q is a no-brainer. Sure, price-wise, it's a bit on the luxury side. But as they say, that you might not need a Leica, but you definitely want a Leica. So that's it as far as the Leica Q is concerned. For more videos on photography and filmmaking and photography and filmmaking gear, subscribe to our channel GMAX Studios. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.